lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. So happy for y'all to be in the house of the Lord once again, amen. Amen, are y'all ready for worship? My God, amen. Just want to welcome y'all. Listen, if you have any prayer requests, please you can give those to me. You can give those to Brother Talir. You can write it on um, social media. Amen. Thank God for prayer ministry. Amen. 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 So you can start also giving those prayer requests to me. Amen. Also, if you would like to give, somebody say Givelify. Amen. Amen. You can download Givelify on any electronic device where you can give your tithes, your offering, or anything God has blessed you with. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and stand up as we reverence God and call to worship. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him according to his mighty acts, amen, and his excellent greatness. The Bible says to let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, amen. Somebody praise the Lord, for he is greatly to be praised. Please remain standing as we go into invocation. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. For God is so good. Yes, he is. So good. For he allowed us to be in this place one more time. For that, we are grateful for that. Let's bow our heads as we usher the Holy Spirit into this place. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We truly thank you, Father God, for all of your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. For where would any of us be, Father God? Mm. Without you, oh Heavenly Father. All about you, oh God. All about you. All about you. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit that you have implanted within each and every one of us, O oh Heavenly Father, that we might come together and worship you, O oh God, in spirit and in truth. Father God, we just also thank you, Father God, for all of our virtual listeners out there, Father God, that you have touched their hearts and their minds to just to tune in, Father God, that they too might worship and come together with us all on one accord. All for one purpose, oh Heavenly Father, is to bless in your holy and righteous name, Father God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we love you, Lord. Now as we go into this service this day, Father God, we truly is grateful as we say, Amen. devotional scripture reading this morning all of those who have a, a hymnal turn in the back to 592 in the back of your red hymnals 592 for all of our virtual listeners if you have your Bibles which I pray that you do turn your Bibles to Psalms 133 also, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 12 through 20, 
and 25 through 27. That is 1 Corinthians, 12th chapter, 12 through 20, and 25 through 27. If we all have it, say amen. amen. We will begin. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. As the do of Harmon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? And if there were all one member, where were the body? That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. For one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Together, now, now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Amen.
Somebody knows what happens when you give your all to Jesus Christ. Amen? Do I have a church here today that has given their all to Jesus Christ? You have given all your pain to Jesus Christ. You have given all your anxiety to Jesus Christ. You have given all your faults to Jesus Christ. Do I have a church in here that knows what it means to give their all to Jesus Christ? Don't miss your opportunity, amen, to praise God. Praise Him while you can, amen. He is worthy, church, to be praised. about 15 seconds, amen, and let loose. Take about 15 seconds and just give God all the praise, all the glory. Just let loose. Let loose. Give him your all. We're going to worship him, y'all. We're going to praise him, amen? We're going to worship and praise him. Amen. We're going to ask Sister Wiggins to come at this time for announcements, amen? And also as she comes, amen, and presents the announcements, please prepare for a tithes and offerings. But even in all that, you ain't got to stop praising, amen? You ain't got to stop praising. church. Just a, a couple of announcements this morning. Um, just a reminder, all women are asked to meet right after service this morning in the mini chapel. So right after service, go directly down to the mini chapel for a quick meeting. So that's for all women. And also, uh, game night. Just remember, 427 or April 27th is game night. And that's from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Invite everybody out. You know, it's all, it's funny. Sometimes adults say, you know, it's it's hard to meet for hard to make friends. Kids don't have a problem making friends, but you know, for for adults, sometimes it is hard to meet new people and make new friends. This is the perfect opportunity. You know, bring a game or not, or just come. And this is just going to be a good time. And it's for kids, it's for adults, it's for teenagers, it's for anybody that wants to come and play games. So, again, on um, April twenty seventh, game night is from three p.m. to seven p.m. And there will be food. So, you Amen. know, Amen. food and games, y'all, what could be better? Right. right. And also, just a reminder that the Mother's Day luncheon is on um, May 11th, and that's at 1 p.m. 
So those are the announcements this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Wiggins, our church clerk. Thank God for her. Amen. 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 I do want to let the brothers know. Uh, is this the third Tuesday? It is? Okay. This this Tuesday, amen, we will be having our Man on the Mission. Amen. So uh, Man on the Mission this Tuesday here at Union at 6 p.m. Amen? Amen. All men are welcome. All young men are welcome. Amen. You have sons. Bring your sons. Amen? Amen. You do not want to leave them out. We have a good time in learning the word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, also, I know uh, we have a meeting. Also, we have a meeting uh, after service for the Larkins family. Amen. Amen. Those who were text, they already know. Those who I've talked to, they know who they are to be in there. So, you know, just so no confusion won't be for the um, the other meeting, the the women's ministry meeting. Amen. Amen. Uh, there will be some women not in there for that time. Amen. 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 Now it was giving time. Amen. Amen. Let me give God a hand praise for giving. How many know if it wasn't for the Lord, amen, who, who blessed your pocketbook? Amen? Who, who, who blessed, amen, you to, to pay that electric bill, amen? Why you got food on the table, amen? Deacon Jackson over here with some red gators on, amen? I know he been blessed, amen? Amen, amen. But God is in the blessing business, amen. But we have to trust him. We have to put our faith in him, amen. And God does call to give a portion back to him, amen. And in his word, we know that we cannot, what, beat his give, giving, amen. And God loves who, church? A cheerful giver, amen. Not one that is begrudgingly, not one that gives out of necessity, not one that gives out of because somebody told them, but because the joy, because the love they have for their Lord and Savior. Amen. So I pray today that God has put on your heart, amen, that purpose in your heart to give back to him. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this time Lord, that we are able to give back to you, dear and Father Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, that my giving, Lord, will never beat, dear and Father Lord, what you give to me, Lord. And you, Lord, you know how to give to me. You know how to give to us, Lord Jesus. Lord, you know how to give past the dollar bill, Lord, the dollar dollar bill, that green, that change. Lord, you know how to give past that, Lord. You know how to give me peace. You know how to give me love, Lord. You know how to give me joy even in the midst of all what's going on. So we thank you today, Lord, that you have purposed us to give back to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Deacon Jackson will come around now.
Amen, amen, amen. At this time, I'm going to ask if we have any birthdays in the month of April. If you are born, if you were born in April this month, please stand to your feet. April birthdays, amen. I, I knew March was, I knew March was the month. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. We we got we got to get some uh, April babies up in here, amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> For the church, please stand to their feet. <laughs> y'all y'all pray for your deacon, amen. Deacon Jackson will come now and bless what God has received today. Yes, he is. seated. As the choir comes, let's prepare for what God has for us in his sermon. Please turn to Romans chapter 1. Amen. Romans chapter 1. Amen. Bless us, choir.
How many know to call on the name of Jesus? Brother Cooley, I think sometimes we find ourselves in situations because we forget to call on the name of the Lord. We call Sally and Sue. We call Tom. We call everybody but Jesus. We think everybody has become, become so educated that is on social media and has a page. Amen. And we forget to call upon Jesus. But how many know you cannot go wrong with calling upon Jesus? How many know that? Amen. Do you know you cannot go wrong with calling on Jesus? Call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. I do want to say, uh, let us keep Sister Chizana Miller in prayer. Amen. Uh, let us continue to keep Brother Steve and his family in prayer. Amen. Uh, going through the loss of a loved one, going through the loss of a wife, a mother. Amen. It is not easy, so we want to keep him and keep them in prayer. Keep Sister Lori in prayer. Amen. She was not able to make it here today. Keep her in prayer. Keep all the sick and shut in. Amen. Amen. Keep them all in prayer. I do want to say about game night. Please just don't invite another Christian. Amen. Uh, for someone to come to game night, they don't have to be all holy and sanctified. Amen. They don't have to be wearing the nicest clothes. They don't have to smell the best. Amen. Uh, uh, they, it, it, they could be dealing with some addictions in their life. They could be going through some things in life. Amen. They may, may even need a ride from you. Don't let that stop you from inviting them to the game night. Amen. Not everybody is used to, or, or, to be honest, not everybody wants to come into the sanctuary doing a worship service. And just maybe if they can see Christians, amen, if they can see Christians having fun the right way, amen, right. if they can see Christians having fun in the name of Jesus, yes. just maybe, just maybe. They will come to the faith. Amen. Amen. I also want to give God praise. Uh, God willing, if there's no setbacks, you know, when you come inside the church and you look right down the hall, if you by yourself, sometimes it can be very scary. <laughs> it looks very dark down there. Amen. Right. But uh, I thank God. Amen. Because uh, Mark and his crew, uh, the crew who put the lights in, the doors in. Uh, who who built that wall in the offices, who who and they did it all for free, amen. Amen. They will be coming Monday, amen. To, amen. Give God praise. They will be coming Monday, amen. To put a new drop top back there and new lights, amen. Wow. So God is good, church. God is good. Uh, sometimes you wonder why God blesses you or blesses us blesses me the way he does. I just think he loves us so much. Amen. And in, in, in that, amen, don't want to get too much into my sermon, but in that, it, it provokes us to our obligation to be eager to go share the gospel when you see what God is doing in your life. Amen. Let's pray. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're going to come to you right now, Lord, ready Lord, to hear a word from you, Lord Jesus. Use us, Lord, not just me, Father God, but use your church, Lord, that they may hear a word from you, Lord, and they will apply it to their life, Lord Jesus. Father God, I pray, Lord, that you that I will be hidden behind the cross, that your, your people, Lord, will only see you, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, control my tongue, Father God, that I may speak what you want me to speak today, dear Father, Lord. 
Lord, if, if, if it's for you, Lord, to take me off the course that is written, Father God, in my tablet, Lord Jesus, let it be so. Lord, let thy will be done in your name. Father God, we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hope you have your Bibles open to Romans chapter 1. We went through verses 1 through 7 last week. Today I do have two main verses. And if we could stand for God's reading, Romans chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. And I'll be reading from the CSB, the Christian Standard Bible. It's another version of the Bible I think I have fell in love with. Amen. The word of God reads this in Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 14. I am obligated both to Greeks and barbarians, both to the wise and the foolish. So I am what eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. May God have a blessing, amen, and to the hearers and doers of his word, you may be seated. Church, as we continue our study in the book of Romans, the question I want to put on your mind today is, are you still eager for Jesus, the church, and the ministry? See, Jeremiah 2, verses 2, puts it like this. The Lord says, I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago. How you loved me and followed me even through the barren wilderness. Who remembers when they were first fell in love with God? Can y'all remember that? The desire to serve, the desire to please, and the desire to tell others about Jesus Christ. My prayer today is that through the Holy Spirit, church, through the work of God in your life, the, that the desire, the love, the eagerness to do all things God will become a passion again. Amen? Like someone who finds that passion for their job again. Like someone who finds their desire to go back to school again. Like someone who finds their eagerness to forgive. Like someone who finds the passion, the desire, their eagerness, the love for their marriage again. More so the church for the Lord. Church, we need our eagerness back, amen, to serve the Lord, amen, to love the Lord like we used to, amen. In our passage today, including verses 8 through 12, Paul, after opening Romans chapter 1 with the, his greetings to the Roman church, Paul moves into writing about how he is eager to visit them in Rome. Amen? In verse 8, Paul gives thanks to the Lord for the, for the church's faith. In verses 9 and 10, Paul expresses how he prays for the church day and night. And how he prays for their opportunity, God willing, that he can what? See them soon. In verse 11 through 13, Paul begins to explain why he is eager to see them. Paul wants to teach them more about Jesus and spiritual gifts, what? To strengthen and confirm them in their faith. But Paul does not, uh, uh, he does not want only to give to them. He wants what? To receive a word from them too. Do y'all hear me? He wants to receive a word from them too. Why? So there will be a mutual encouragement of each other's faith. Church, write this down. We should not come to our place of worship with like-minded believers just to receive a word for ourselves. But also what to impart the word of God on what? Each other. Church, I don't care who you are. If you are in Christ Jesus, you have something to offer in the body of Christ. I pray you believe that. I pray you know that. 
You have something to offer in the body of Christ. God did not create you only to receive a blessing, but what? To what? Be a blessing. How many of you here to know today that they are, they can be a blessing? Amen? Amen. Shoot, I'll be the first to tell you, I need the blessing of your encouragement that what strengthens me. The blessing of your testimony that strengthens me. The blessings of your love that strengthens me. The blessing of your teaching that strengthens me. The blessing of your faith that strengthens me. The blessing of your presence. Get that. The blessing of your presence that, str that strengthens me. Indeed. See, Proverbs 27, 17 proclaims, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens the other. Church, we are not built... Amen. We are not built to only uh, be sharpened. We are built to what? Sharpen each other. Therefore, we what? We all get better. Amen. Just not you getting better, but we all getting better. Amen. Because the word you receive, amen, you will bless me with it. Amen. And the word that I receive, I will bless you with it. Write this down too. In verses 11 and 13, and I'm going to read this. We, all, we also can learn from there's a no in, there's, excuse me, there's a blessing in the no. Amen? In verses 11 through 13, it says, for I want very much to see you. Amen? Hear that. He said, I want very much to see you. Paul wants to see the church in Rome while he's in Corinthians. He says, I very much want to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts, amen, to strengthen you, that is, to be mutual encouragement by each other's faith. Listen, uh, uh, but yours and mine. Now listen to verse 13. Now I don't want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that I often planned to come to you, but was what? Prevented until now. In order that I might have a, a fruitful ministry, there is a blessing in the no. I, I pray you caught that because Paul had an eagerness to go to Rome. Amen. But God's hand prevented Paul from going. Tell your neighbor there is a purpose in God's sovereign no. Because Paul was prevented to go to Rome, the fruit from, the, from that prevention is this wonderful, powerful epistle, inspired word of God, Paul wrote, called what? The Book of Romans. Paul, you can't go right now, but while you wait. Paul, you can't go to Rome right now, but while you wait. I know you want to visit Rome and you're eager to go see them, amen, to minister to them and be ministered to, but for right now, Paul, while you wait... While you wait, I'm here today, church, to tell you, you might be wondering why God has said no to you and your plans. You may wonder why God has shut the door, amen, in a door that you wanted to walk through. Amen? I'm here to tell you that God will give you a sovereign no. But church, don't, do not fret and do not be dismayed, Amen? But understand and learn how to wait upon the Lord. Amen? amen? For it is him that renews your strength. Amen? And know that God's no, amen, means greater for you in your life. Amen. I pray you get that. Some people are trying to fight against God and they want something. They want this. They want that right now. But God is saying no. Amen? It's not to punish you. It's not to hurt you. But he's telling you I got greater for you. In this time, while you wait, there is greater for you, church, in the time while you wait. You just think about how Paul, if he didn't wait, well, Romans came out the way it came out. Amen. But in the time while Paul waited, he just didn't sit there. Amen. But he took out a pen and a pad. Amen. Or in those days, I guess a, a scroll. Amen. And he started writing the book of Romans. Amen. A book of instructions. Amen. To show the church what the righteousness of God looks like. There is a blessing. There is greater in God's no. Just know that. As we come to our main verses. 
in 14, verses 14 through 17, Paul writes how he is obligated to the Greek and barbarian, the barbarians, the wise, and the foolish. There is a lot in there, but for the sake of time, amen, know that Paul was obligated and eager to preach across cultural, social, racial, and economic lines, both to the Jew and to the Gentiles. The gospel is for everyone in church. Amen? It's for everyone. Now, why is Paul saying this? It's because of what God had done for him. Paul was obligated and eager because he knew, he knows what God has done for him. Well, what did God do for him? Well, if you know anything about Paul, church, you can read about it in Acts chapter 9, amen, or the, or uh, you know that Paul was once named who? Saul. And he, in his Saul days, this brother was a murderer, amen? He was a persecutor of Christians. You can even call him the murderer, persecutor, coat hanger, amen, of Christians. I don't understand, amen, if somebody murders somebody today, I I don't know how we would perceive him or look at him in church, amen, but Paul was a murderer, a persecution of Christians, amen? But, church, when he meets who? Jesus. When he meets Jesus and Jesus speaks to him in the midst of his murderous ways, amen? Church, aren't you glad today that while you are wrapped up in your sin, amen, while you are wrapped up in your sin, God through his Holy Spirit still spoke to your nasty self, amen? That's why I can rejoice today. That's why you can rejoice today. Because while you were living to please every part of your flesh, and I mean every part of your flesh, amen, God still called you. He still called you for a purpose, amen. While you were living any kind of way, God still wanted you, amen. While you were thinking any kind of way, God still knocked on the door of your heart amen you can rejoice today because you did not have to be clean you did not have to clean yourself up first to become uh, to come to god amen but it was god amen it was god who took a little old dirty uh big sinner like you and me and cleaned us up completely paul you out here killing folks proclaiming the gospel but uh, uh, when, I, when I get a hold of you, I can uh, change you and you can write uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the Pauline epistles. You can write all these books and you was once a murderer. Church, get over yourself. Yeah, you a sinner. Yeah, you done messed up in life. But when God gets a hold of you, he has a purpose for you in your life. There's a purpose for you in your life. If God can take David, a murderer and a cheat, amen, and put him as king, amen, and then a blessing come out of his lineage, amen, not just Solomon, but I'm talking about Jesus Christ himself. God can take you and what you have been through. I don't care how dirty you, you have gotten, amen. I, know, I don't care how long you have a, a, a swim with the pigs in the field, amen. When God gets a hold of you, he can clean you up and turn you around. Church, and when you know that, you know what God has done for you. There is an eagerness. There is an obligation to the work of the Lord. Paul then says that he is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Meaning he is not ashamed of what the gospel represents. To be ashamed of something means you are embarrassed or guilty because of one's actions. It is ironic that Paul declares this when he In one point of his life, he shamed those that proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. But when you know that you know what you know. See, Paul knew a lot about God. He knew the Old Testament front and back. But all he had was 
information. Amen? Tell your neighbor, is that all you have is information? That's all Paul had was information. Amen? But when Jesus got a hold of him, it was not about the information no more, but it was about the transformation in his life. That's why he went from Saul to Paul. He was, even his name transformed, amen? Paul was not embarrassed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because he knew the gospel, amen? It's, it, he knew the gospel. It was the power of God, amen, for the salvation to everyone who believes, amen? Therefore, it was not because of the book. It was not because of Paul's book smarts, amen? It was not because of his education. It was not because of his authority. It was not because of his family background. It was not because of his birthplace. It was not because of his power, but it was because of the power of God through the gospel unto salvation in his life, amen? Is there anybody who can proclaim they are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because you know it was his gospel that took you from the evil mindset. It was the gospel that led you away from sexual immorality. It was the gospel that took you from your selfish ways. It was the gospel that cleaned you up from sin. It was the gospel amen, his power that he saved you from the condemnation of sin. It was the gospel of Jesus Christ that through your belief through your faith First to the Jew and to the Greek, that through grace you are now considered what? Righteousness. There's a reason why Paul was not ashamed, amen? There's a reason why he wanted to proclaim the gospel. There's a reason why he was eager to share everything, everything about Jesus to the Roman church, amen? And it's because he knew the power of the transforming grace of Jesus Christ in his life. Paul, Paul and those who believe on Jesus, who have received him as Lord and personal Savior, are considered what? Righteous. Before Christ, before the gospel of Jesus Christ, we were what? Unrighteous. Considered dirty as a filthy rag. But because of the gospel that was preached, and our belief in the gospel that was preached, the power of God, the Holy Spirit, has made me and you clean, and God now considers us righteous. Amen? Amen. Therefore, now we are what? Deemed righteous. It is written, the righteous will what? Live by faith. I don't think y'all heard me. It says, it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Amen. Therefore, your life, amen, is not based on what you have done, amen? You are not considered righteous because of anything that you may do, amen? You may read the whole Bible a hundred times in your life. That don't make you righteous. The Bible says it is written that you shall live by righteousness, Amen. Uh, the righteous will live by what? Faith alone. Church, don't try to live off of the things that you do. Don't try to live off of the law that is presented to you. Amen. Don't try to live off of a to-do list. Amen. A checkoff list where you think God is going to be pleased with you. Amen. But I'm here today to tell you that since we are righteous and we live by faith, that means that we live on the blood of who? Jesus Christ. Amen. We are living because he went to the cross for our sins. Amen. It's nothing that we have done. It's, nothing, uh, it's not the good or the bad you have done. Amen. I don't care how much work you put into this. Amen. But it is because of the blood of Jesus that you are considered righteousness and because of the blood of Jesus that's how I choose to live I choose to live by faith amen I choose to live by my belief in Jesus Christ I don't choose to believe in how good I can preach amen or how good I may look amen I don't I don't preach amen because of that but I preach because I know the blood of Jesus Christ but how he has made me and how he has transformed me and how he has made me righteous in Jesus Christ amen Amen. Church, this is why we have a hard time moving forward because we're steady working on trying to see if we can move by the things that we do and not, and not move by the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. 
your belief in Jesus Christ, your faith in Jesus Christ. That, that, is, that, that, is, that is a faith that moves you along. That is a faith that gives you purpose today, amen? That is the faith, amen, in God. That is a faith in God that what? That, that leads to what? Righteous living. We got to stop proclaiming Jesus and then trying to live on our own righteousness. It ain't going to work. I've tried it, amen? And every time I do, amen, I find out I ain't strong enough, Deke. I find out that I ain't good enough, amen, to, to live off of my own merit, amen? I find out that I, I'm not good enough, amen. You can have a 4.0 in school, that ain't going to get you into heaven, but it's the righteousness, amen, that is within you from Jesus Christ dying on the cross for your sins and justifying you, that, amen, that will help you be successful in your life today. It's a righteousness. It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Church, the gospel leads to righteous living. As we close today, I want to iterate that, amen? I'm learning when you close, amen? Your conclusion, you're supposed to go back through and give a summary of what you're talking about. You know? But in our conclusion, righteousness is very much needed. The gospel of Jesus Christ is very much needed. Amen? Yes, it's very much in, uh, The purpose through Jesus is very much needed. Righteousness is what we need to live this life. Church, there's, there's so much hell out there trying to, trying to kill you right now, trying to steal your joy. Trying to take everything away from you, trying to take your, trying to destroy your marriage, trying to, trying to uh, uh, pull you apart from your children, amen. Uh, 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 the, the world is out there trying to make you love money, amen. The world is out there thinking that you got to have status, amen. You need the righteousness of God in your life, amen. That's the only way you're going to get through this life is because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ, amen. You cannot do this on your own, Mary. You can't do this thinking on your own. You can't do this, amen, looking on social media every day day trying to get a word from them but you got to seek Jesus amen who is the righteousness of your life amen and therefore you will be successful amen you need righteousness to live this life I'm praying we get that today I'm praying that we understand that today Paul is trying to tell them when you understand the church that he is talking to Jew and Greek amen Jew is like the holy rollers. They know the Bible back and forth, amen. They all about the law. You, the, all the traditions, you got to do this and do that. In the, in the, uh, the, the, the Greek, the Gentiles, amen, in the church there, they are in the church just happy to be there worshiping God. And they may not be doing all the traditional stuff. They may not be following all the rules. But one thing they do know is that they know that Jesus Christ is the Lord and personal Savior. And this is who Paul is talking to. So this is the reason why he is on this thing about righteousness. Too much in the church. We talk about you got to do this, you got to do that. It's supposed to be like this, this is supposed to be like that. But when we seek the righteousness of Jesus Christ, he will help us to live out our life like we are supposed to. Stick with the righteousness of God, not your own, but stick with, stick with his. Amen? Let the church stand to their feet. The doors of the church are now open. Amen? We want to give the opportunity for anyone that God has put on their heart to come forth and give their life to him. Maybe you want to rededicate your life. Maybe you're tired of the same old, same old. And you want to rededicate your life back to God. That's not saying you weren't saved before. But in your life, you want better. You want to do better. Is there one who wants to give their life to Christ? Is there one who wants to rededicate their life to Jesus Christ today? Is there one? Is there one? We offer membership, amen, to anybody who wants to join you again. This is not done by us, but this is because of Christ, amen, because of what Christ did on the cross 
for all of our sins. Amen. You join you. Do you want to join union today? Do you want to be a part of this ministry? You can come at this time. Is there one? Is there one? Reverend Josh, can we get a verse of a song? Lead us. Doors of the church are still open. Who is looking to be transformed? church family. Give God a hand praise. He is worthy to be praised. At this time, we are going to close in prayer. Amen. But I want to do this before we close. Uh, as we close, if there's a name on your heart, if you know somebody who is not saved, then they're on your heart. Amen. If you feel God is leading to call their name out loud, you may do so at this time. And if there's somebody you just want to pray for, amen, or you need prayer yourself, call that out at this time, amen? Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for purpose in our life. We thank you, Father God, for the call. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for salvation. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that it was you who cleansed us. Lord, it was you who cleaned, cleaned us up. But Lord, it was nothing of us, Lord, that we can do. But we thank you, Father God, for your blood that was shed for us and that has washed us white as snow. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for those who have came today, those who have moved in obedience, Lord, and sacrificed today. We thank you, Lord, for them, Lord. We know, Lord Jesus, that it was not easy for everyone to get up and come today. But Father God, we thank you, Lord, that they are here, Lord. Father God, I'm praying, Lord, that a word has penetrated, Lord, your people, them and Father, and, and Father God, they are looking to be transformed today. Father God, I'm asking you, Lord, that we, do, we when we leave here today, Lord, we don't leave the same that we came in, but we leave for the better. Father God, I'm praying that we walk out of here with, with increased faith, increased boldness, Lord. Lord, eager, Lord Jesus, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father God, we pray over the names that were called out. We pray over the names, Lord Jesus, that are on social media, Lord. We, we pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, for those prayers that were written down, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to touch the sick and the shut-in, Lord. Those, Lord, who are dealing with diabetes or high blood pressure, Lord kidney disease, Lord, heart disease, cancer, Father God. 
We pray for those, Lord, who had strokes, Lord, and who are recovering, Heavenly Father, Lord. We pray for our brother Adams, Lord, who is laying in the hospital, Heavenly Father. We pray for those families, Lord, who have lost loved ones. Father God, we seek you for everything, Lord, that we need. And Father God, I just, I, I want to say thank you, Lord. That even though we have to deal with the life, there is still joy in the midst. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have made a way where we don't grieve like the world. But in the midst of our pain, Lord, we can still have an authentic smile. We still can have an authentic praise, Lord. We, still, we can have an authentic worship, Lord, even though we are going through. We thank you for that blessing upon our lives, Father God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father God, be with us as we leave this place. May your mercy be upon us. May your grace continue to shine on us, Lord Jesus. Lord, may we leave this place and proclaim the gospel, Lord, that we are not, not shamed of. We are unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it transformed us. It has changed us. It has made us whole. And we are the righteousness. Church, hear me when I, when I pray this thing. We are the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You are nothing less. You are the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Father God, help us to live as the righteousness of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Church, be blessed. Please do not forget about our meetings. Amen. God bless you.